How's it going everyone? It's all of you from Weather Swan Drop. That was in today. It's February 18, 2022, and today we're gonna focus on not one but two winter storms that could impact the northern Midwest as well as the northeast headed into this coming week. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather delay calls. Make sure to like if you'd like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather delay calls. So let's begin by taking a look at the current radar for the lower 48 of the United States, and of course, we're now seeing that trough that brought a heavy amount of snow throughout the midwest as well as heavy rain and severe weather to the southeast now moved to the northeast so it's no longer a threat for the united states at this time we are seeing the pretty much the back end of these rain showers mo move just off the east coast but nothing to worry about for the united states with this trough any longer as this should quickly move to the northeast along with the strong jet stream winds however we do have this feature here of some snow showers moving through the northern great lakes at this time and i'd say for the most part you should experience probably around one to three inches of snow nothing major but make sure to be at least be aware of it because the roadways could be slick here in the northern midwest states however this won't have much potential to develop into anything major as there just isn't going to be enough lift in the atmosphere and there isn't just enough strength around the center of circulation for any sort of major snowstorm to develop out of this and also the slow pressure will primarily stay to the north of the united states border as this moves further eastward so nothing to worry about here however um, like I've been saying with other troughs that move through the United States during the winter time, there is a possibility, well, it's pretty much inevitable at this point, that this is going to bring just, just enough of a strong northerly flow and a ridge further south where the Arctic Ridge that should cool down the temperatures throughout the United States and that could lead to a that will lead to a pattern where more snowstorms will develop in the Midwest and impact not only the Midwest but the Northeast as well and we could see heavy rain and severe weather on uh, right around the Southeast as well associated with these snowstorms because as we begin to see a strong northerly flow we're going to see the jet stream position itself to where it's going to bring uh um a decent amount of troughs along the pacific northwest coast and that should move to the midwest to create an unstable environment for our next two major snowstorms to develop right around the midwest so let's first take a look at the forecasted radar from the gfs model when it comes to the next several days and if we were to take a look at that like i said we're gonna see this small trough move through and it's gonna bring an arctic ridge further southward and that should bring the temperatures below at um down to below average temperatures throughout the northeast as well as the northern great lakes as a result of this strong northerly flow however like i said this low pressure system won't really be strong enough for really any sort of any sort of made something major to develop out of it as you see that the warm air is going to be well to the south of this low pressure system so it won't really have that fuel or that lift in the atmosphere to really help develop this low pressure system into something stronger so again it won't be anything major but the major thing that the significant impact that's going to bring is cooler than average temperatures will which will lead to the jet stream to position itself sort of in this fashion where we're going to see a northwesterly flow bring low pressure systems from the british um, canada area further southward into the united states so if i were to continue move forward you see that another clipper system moves along this jet stream dip and this clipper system is a little bit stronger now it's at 993 millibars which and so it should bring a stronger northerly flow associated with it and as we, if we were to continue move forward you see that's exactly what happens and this northerly flow the pretty much this pressure gradient between this ridge that's located right around the british canada area as well as this um low pressure system that's going to move through the you know um, just north of the united states canada border will bring a strong northerly flow that should steer these troughs along the pacific west coast further southward and eventually into the midwest where it should encounter a very warm and humid environment pretty um that's pretty much gonna um that where this ridge is gonna bring about 
that very warm and humid moisture from the Gulf of Mexico further northward. As you see that there's a strong southerly flow throughout the Gulf Coast states as a result of this very powerful ridge. And that's going to create the unstable environment throughout the Midwest for our next snowstorm to develop. To develop. As you see, we're going to see the snow move throughout the northern midwest at this time and we're gonna begin to see convection in, right around the southeast right around the gulf coast states of uh, mississippi alabama louisiana this is where you should experience thunderstorm activity as well as rain shower activity associated with this jet stream dip and the amount of unstable air there is and that's gonna lead to higher rates of precipitation when it comes to snowfall and rainfall you see that the area of snow expands throughout the midwest and this impacts cities such as minneapolis this impacts milwaukee and even chicago is getting involved with a little bit of a mixture of wintry precipitation so this is definitely something you want to keep in mind and in terms of timing this happens right around the tuesday time frame so it's approximately three to four days out. So there's still uncertainty regarding how powerful this low pressure system will exactly be. And of course, the position is definitely something important we're going to have to iron out over the next several days. However, with the GFS model and the European model agreeing with pretty similar forecasts when it comes to the area of um, how large an area of snowfall is, as well as the position of where the snowfall will accumulate it really gives a more confidence with the forecast and what you'd see with a forecast that's between three to four days out however there's still uncertainty regarding the amount of snowfall accumulation associated with this area because the gfs model wants to bring heavier rates of snowfall associated with this trough moving through while the european model isn't as lenient as bringing as heavy snowfall which mean which in um, as a result means that the European model is expecting less snowfall in general so if I were to show you um, yeah the snow moves through the Midwest and we see another low pressure system develop on the back side as again this trough is going to be very broad and elongated to the point where we're going to see sort of too low pressure system develop because of how elongated this air mass is when it comes to the amount of cold air interacting with the warmer air mass for southward because we see this first round of snow develop right around the Tuesday time frame but later during Tuesday and into early Wednesday we see another um, low pressure system develop sort of on the back side because we see another significant jet stream dip on the back side of this trough and that develops another low pressure system so that should add on to snow totals and should make it a longer duration event as it's going to be sort of a one-two punch when it comes to these low pressure systems impacting each other however i want to put a disclaimer this isn't the second storm i'm necessarily talking about when it when um it comes to the impacts for the northeast because uh, as i'll show you right now the second snowstorm will come within a week's time frame within seven days and you see that it does bring heavy snowfall throughout the mid-atlantic and northeast states right around the seven day mark there's still far more uncertainty regarding this um forecast because of course we're seven days out and a lot could change between now and seven days from this event especially since the european model is taking quite a different scenario to the gfs model while they're both agreeing that there's going to be some sort of snowstorm um by the friday time frame of next week the what they're where there's pretty big disagreements is the exact location of where that low pressure system moves because that's going to be important when it comes to the amount of snowfall you experience in a certain region of the united states but let me show you guys the forecasted snowfall for this first snowstorm moving through the northern midwest with um um with the gfs model so if i were to show you guys this is what the gfs model is forecasting and you see that it's bringing a large area of 6 to 12 inches of snow extending throughout south dakota extending to minnesota this includes minneapolis and milwaukee is right on the border of three to six to maybe six over six inches of snow and you see that a lot of northern michigan is experiencing over six inches of snow as well so this is a pretty impactful event for a lot of the northern midwest states but if we were to compare it to the european model you see that the european model 
while it's taking the snowfall area at approximately the same location what's different about it is that the snow you see that there's less of an area of three to six i mean over six inches of snow and also you probably notice that it's slightly more the snow the heaviest snowfall is slightly more northward than what the gfs model is forecasting because in milwaukee let's say you guys are expected to receive right around six inches of snow but in this scenario um with the european models scenario you're only receiving right around one three so it's gonna take several days to really iron out the forecast again really depends on the position of this jet stream and that's gonna and it really all depends on the strength of these next few clipper systems that are gonna move through the just north of the canadian united states border because the strength of it will determine the ex the northerly wind component with those with the with the troughs moving through as well as this ridge that's going to move through and that will position the jet stream in a way to where we can determine the snowfall accumulation in a specific area but right now it seems like there's a little bit of uncertainty regarding the exact strength the rate of precipitation with the snowfall as well as the exact location but what i can assure you is that most likely will experience a snowstorm throughout the northern midwest so if you're in minnesota south dakota and extending to wisconsin as well as northern michigan as well you should prepare for a snowstorm it's better to be safe than sorry and i think it's pretty certain at this point you will experience a snowstorm what i mainly what mainly the uncertainty where mainly the uncertainties lie is the exact amount of snowfall the rate of precipitation associated with this low pressure system as well as the exact location of where the heaviest snowfall will occur while i don't think there's going to be any sort of significant or drastic changes remember that it only takes a small change to make a big difference in terms of how much snowfall you receive within a local area so especially if you're right along the border between the dry and snow line let's say right now in milwaukee it's going to be a closer forecast for you guys so make sure to pay close attention to that over the next several days however that's not the only snowstorm we're going to pay close attention to over the next several days because we also, again, have this other snowstorm that's expected to impact the northeast. So if I were to continue move forward, you see that as this trough moves to the northeast one after impacting the northern Midwest, we're still going to see that jet stream position itself to where it's pretty much asking for an another unstable environment to develop right around the midwest and the mississippi river valley and that should allow for a new low pressure system to develop right around the southeast or the southern portion of the midwest and this should bring snow to a large area you however again this is where the uncertainty lies the location because you see that in the European model's case, the low pressure is far more westward than what the GFS model is saying. Because if we were to compare this uh, GFS model, let's say, um, let's move to the 160 hour mark or the 163 hour mark. You see that the low pressure is pretty much right around the convergence of the Ohio River and the Mississippi River right around this location. If we were to compare that to the GFS model around the 163 hour mark so if i were to show you guys um that at the 163 hour mark you see that the center of cir circulation is located well further eastward it's located more towards west virginia rather than missouri where the european model is taking the low pressure system which means that the snow should be should impact those further eastward rather than the northern midwest so a lot to um so there's still pretty high uncertainty regarding this forecast because we're t we're talking about two completely different scenarios taking a difference between i'd say over 500 miles when it comes to the exact track and that's huge when determining the impacts of a uh, specific location will experience so definitely something we um we need to pay close attention over the next several days it's still very uncertain it's still um hi i'm um, still um a lot to a lot of questions regarding these snowstorms but the but the european model and the gfs model are both showing that snowstorm will develop late into next week and that's suddenly something we at least need to be aware of this isn't one of those scenarios where 
um, one of the computer models isn't necessarily showing a snowstorm because both of them are showing a snowstorm developing right around late week next week. So there is at least a little bit more certainty that there will be some sort of snowstorm, at least for the northern Great Lakes and the northeast. But the question really remains where exactly that low pressure system will be. And of course, another question is how much cold air there will be because you see that the GFS model is taking far more snowfall further southward in the mid-Atlantic than the European model. If I were to compare the snowfall totals from um, with the GFS model to the European. So let me move forward to the um, to right around the seven day mark. You see that the GFS model wants to bring the snow as far south as Washington DC area, bringing a large area of three to six inches of snow and over six inches of snow in some areas of the Northeast. Compare that to the European model, where if I were to show you the European model, the snowfall is well further northward further northeast but the european model is taking a much heavier amount of snow for the areas further northward where we're talking about over six inches of snow this is impacting boston but you see that anywhere south of i'd say trenton new jersey it's completely dry without any sort of snowfall accumulation so in New York City, you're experiencing right around three inches, but you're right around the rain snow lines. And there is a possibility that this snow will change over the rain to wash that snow away, which would definitely be good news for some who don't necessarily enjoy the snow. But still, again, a lot of uncertainty. I want to... Uh, I want to emphasize that it really all depends on the amount of cold air, of course, the position of the jet stream. And um, we're really going to need to see... We're gonna we're really gonna need to see this first snowstorm move through before we can make a more certain forecast for this next snowstorm because this first snowstorm that's gonna move through will determine how the jet stream will position itself by the time we head into late next week to really determine the exact track and also the amount of cold air this ridge is gonna bring to the northeast. So still a lot of uncertainty, but I'll make sure to keep you guys updated as we get more confidence with the forecast now um let me show you the my official snowfall forecast pretty much um combining what the european model and the gfs model are stating at this time so for this first snowstorm i'm expecting a large area of 6 to 12 inches this includes minneapolis that is just north of milwaukee south dakota's getting involved northern michigan just north of Grand Rapids, you should experience over 6 to 12 inches of snow. And I'm expecting 3 to 6 inches of snow throughout Michigan. This is combining what you could experience from the second snowstorm as well. So make sure to keep that in mind as well. And you could even see some snow um, just to the west of, Col of Denver where you could see up to um, 12 inches of snow in the higher elevations of the Rocky Mountain. So make sure to keep that in mind. And with the second snowstorm, you see that I'm expecting a 6 to 12 inch range to be a little bit further southward as it seems like anywhere just north of New York City will experience a major snowstorm, but make but still a lot of uncertainty. Um, there's still stuff to, cha to, to change, so don't take this with a big grain of salt for now, but I'd say for the northern Midwest, you should prepare for a snowstorm because it is likely at this point. But for northeast, I'd at least just keep your eye on this one. Don't prepare just yet because there's still a possibility that we might not see uh, any sort of major snowstorm out of this. So definitely um, a lot of questions, but I'll make sure to update you guys over the next several days. But I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you'd like to video. Make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. And I hope you guys have a great day.